In this video demonstration, I'll show you how to measure the hysteresis curve of your sample using a neodymium magnet. So we will vary the magnetic field by placing microscope slides underneath the magnet to vary the distance between the sample and the bamboo stick which, it's, which it is attached to. So first we'll attach the sample to the bamboo stick. So this is done by a piece of parafilm. So I have uh, the parafilm attached here and then I wrap around Mm, this can be slightly tricky, especially since this is already magnetized, so it's not virgin. So it really wants to uh, uh, align itself with the field below. So I'll try to attach it to the bamboo stick. And you see now it is sitting in the parafilm, so I can remove the parafilm. So then I need a balance. And I need some microscope slides. So basically here I have measured the distance between my sample, which is sitting now on top, and the neodymium magnet underneath. And actually I can put one more slide and still have it resting. So this is now the closest that I can possibly bring my magnet to the neodymium magnet. So you notice I've placed a box on the scale as well and actually the scale is using magnetism so therefore we have to be a bit careful not bringing the neodymium magnet too close to the scale. So what I do now is to have a defined distance I remove 30 of the microscope slides. So they have each a distance of one millimeter so in this way I can then actually have a distance of 30 millimeters between the neodymium magnet and my sample. So I now place it on the balance and I re-zero. So this sample I'm using is actually not a virgin magnet so it will already have some magnetization and you see already at a distance of 30 millimeter we see a quite strong signal. So in this case I would want to turn the magnet in the opposite direction to move the attractive force between my sample and the sample underneath. So you see now the balance actually got lighter because we are now attracting the sample. So by increasing the field I should then see an increase of my magnetization. So I basically just take four microscope slides which I place below the magnet. So in this way the distance is smaller and the applied field larger. So I just put it on top, I re-zero, and then I can place my magnet over. Okay, so there are the balance. Okay, it's a bit shaky. I'll re-zero. There it is, and I apply it, and you see the attractiveness has now increased. So this all wi will increase until I have placed all the microscope slides underneath the sample. So this is basically the situation where I have the largest applied field between my sample and the neodymium magnet. So I re-zero and then I put my magnet on top. So let's see if the balance goes to zero. It's really shaky. Okay, we re-zero again and hold the breath. Try again. Okay, let's assume that it will come to zero. Never mind. We placed the magnet on top. This is now the closest distance. So this is the full magnetic force we have. And actually the tiny pellet we have is lifting what is equivalent of almost 11 grams so this is the saturation magnetization. What I now want to measure is the reverse. So when I reduce the magnetic field. So I take my sample off. I remove four microscope slides or maybe less at the very beginning here. I re-zero the balance which seems to be not so easy. And I'm really trying to hold my breath Okay, there it is. 
and you now see that the repulsion is dropping. So it will drop all until I am again those 30 millimeters away from the sample and in that case I have sort of reached the remnants of my system. So this will be it's not actually equivalent. What I have to do is I have to turn around the magnet now to actually measure the remnants. So this is what I have in uh, this orientation and then I take the magnet and I basically rotate it to turn the polarization. So now the repulsion or the attraction should become a repulsion when I put on my sample. And you see it is repulsed and now I increase the distance until it again becomes an attraction because at that point I have reversed the magnetic field inside my sample and by doing that I can determine the coercivity so I now increase the the amount of microscope slide so I decrease the distance oh and I forgot to re-zero the balance So now you should see that these are still repulsing each other but then when I increase enough and I'll just do this sort of like immediately I will come to the the point where that gives me the coercivity so when I have actually reversed the magnet inside so you see here it's actually very low but it hasn't completely reversed yet because it hasn't become negative but this is very very close to the point where the magnetization will reverse so I'll just put on a few more microscope slides and when you do this you'll of course have to note down every value and very carefully vary the distance so this was just for demonstration that I did this rather quickly and now you see the magnetization has turned now the two are again repulsing each other. So now I'm actually in the third quadrant of the hysteresis loop. So basically to show you what we have been doing, we have been trying to measure the hysteresis loop. So we are starting here at the virgin point, then we increase the magnetic field, that increases the response, so that is the attractiveness between the two magnets, until we reach saturation where they touch then we, we start to remove microscope slides and we are moving down this line until we reach this point where we then have to rotate the magnet so we turn the polarization so we're turning the effective field onto a negative distance here and then again we start to increase the amount of microscope slides to increase the field in the negative direction and we move down the curve in this way and we can then determine the saturation, the remnants and the coercivity. So, good luck.